Pastor John, top of the morning to top you on this St. Paddy's Day. St. Patrick, go down. Oh, it's such a top great day. Top of the day. morning to you. Oh, hope you all are having a wonderful day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, St. Patrick's Day, it's my day. Um, welcome, it's Wednesday. Yeah. It's great to be here. How was pub theology? It's good. Small and mighty. Okay, Last good. night, talking good. about Lenten sacrifices and Easter traditions. Okay. So a little bit of... A little bit of... Good, a little bit of <laughs> tough. There you go. Yeah. All right, well, great. Well, we're going to continue on with our devotion today. It's Mark 10, verses 21 to 22. Jesus, looking at the man, so we're we're continuing on yesterday. What must yes. I do to inherit eternal life? Yes. Remember that guy? Story of the rich young man. Right. Yep. Jesus says, you know, you know the commandments. He says, I've kept all these. Jesus, looking at the man, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Our to ponder today comes from Leighton Williams, from his uh, writing, um, Holy Disunity. We are called to be anchored above all, to the ethics of the kingdom of God. And when worldly understandings of respectful behavior preserve the power of some by silencing others, we must question whether those worldly understandings match the ethics to which God calls us and which Christ embodies. And here is our devotion. I once read a graphic novel version of the Gospel of Mark, and my favorite illustration was one for this story. The rich young man approaches Jesus, deeply bent over because he is literally weighed down by a ridiculous number of items piled high on his back. Surfboards, bowling balls, couch, a convertible. As Jesus talks to him, the man slowly sinks into the sand under the weight until he completely disappears. How much is enough? This story makes us nervous because we wonder if Jesus is speaking specifically to this man's situation as a potential follower, or to all potential followers, meaning us. Maybe both can be true at the same time. We hold on to things in case we might have use for them. We buy things to fill real and imagined needs. Our accumulation can prevent or hamper our efforts to care for one another. Having things is nice, but things do not give life. We forget that with Jesus, we will never experience lack. Instead, we will experience abundance of life, love, grace, forgiveness, relationship, and community. What do you think, John? I think you were spot on yesterday when you brought up city slickers. (laughs) And it's kind of interesting foreshadowing of Jesus saying here to the rich young man, you lack one thing. And going back to where we were yesterday about, you know, Billy Crystal and and Jack Palance talking of what's the meaning of life, and Jack Palance saying, you got to find that one thing. And I think for us, the hard part is letting that one thing be God's promised abundance. We, that, that in and of itself covers... All of, the, our, all of our wants, all of our needs, and all of our neighbors' wants and needs. But we just don't, we want to add more to it. We want to, we, we don't trust that God's going to make good on that, maybe, mm-hmm. or um, that, I think as our devotion kind of talked about, rainy day stuff. You know, we, we, we save things, so God promises abundance, but... You know, there may be a come a time where, you know, we've got those seven lean years that, that Scripture talks about, and I'm just going to add this stuff just in case. And I think you were dead on in talking about yesterday that one thing here that the rich young man lacks and what we lack is that we don't trust God's abundance, that it, it actually is abundance. Versus, you know, meager portions. Yeah, and I, th- I think we all do it, too. 
you know, I'm, I'm just as guilty as everybody else. Um, there, and, and at the same time, I think there's a, there's a balance. Because I, I, I think there are a number of things that I possess that give me great joy. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And from my home, which I, I love my home, you know, my guitar, my motorcycle, you know, my beer brewing hobby, those kinds of things. I, I gain a lot of joy from them. Um, I wonder if there is a way for us, because I, I do think it's hard because it, it, it's funny because I've always been very, very good at real estate. It's mm -hmm. just, I, I, I used to do it for a living, mm -hmm. so I'm really good at it. And I remember when I moved into my new home and we had moved, we moved about 13 years ago. And we moved because we were getting ready to have the third kid. We had no basement. There's just no place to put different toys and gear for three different kids. And so we needed a house that had the fourth bedroom. Because um, even in the house we were in, even if we put the boys together, it was going to be mashed. It was really going to be small. There was probably a day and age when it would have been okay, but... Kind of in this day and age, yeah. we don't we don't kind of have homes that way, I guess. But I remember moving in, feeling very guilty. And I, the funny thing was, is that um, I I actually bought the home at a time that when I sold my old home and bought this one, the price on this one had fallen so much. That it actually was just a quick bump up. Like I didn't pay very much more to move into it. So it's not like other people might have looked at it and said, wow, that's a much bigger house. And it was in a nicer neighborhood. But because I bought it right before the market crashed in 2008, you know, I, I, yeah. I timed it perfectly. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's the gift I have with real estate. <laughs> um but I felt very, very guilty because, you know, I, I, I felt like, boy, there are people who I know and love here in this church that don't have a house this big. Um, but it really was skill that got me there, <laughs> not cash. Yeah. I, but it, it's funny because um, one of the reasons why I love this story is because with that young man walking away, I feel like he walked away very much how I felt when I moved in there. And I always have to be reminded of the first line of what we read today, where even though this guy has said to Jesus, you know, I've kept all these commandments my whole life. The next line is Jesus looked at him and loved him. Mm -hmm. And if you take that graphic novel image, even though he doesn't even get the way that he doesn't trust the Lord as God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind. You know what I mean? Even yeah. though he is weighed down. And Jesus looked at him and loved him anyway. All Jesus really wants, he's not looking at him and judging him and saying, well, because you do all this, you're not going to heaven. But Jesus doesn't want him to be burdened and weighed down in his life and wants him to be free to let God have the worry and yeah. to let you to be free to live in joy. So that was really long, John, but it just kind of segued off of what you were talking about. And I think that's that's the point, is that you know, Jesus doesn't walk away from the rich young man. It's it's we who the rich young man will turn, turn him. away from from God's abundance, or I think in this case, God's love when we don't trust. Jesus still goes to the cross, and the rich young man is given grace, given mercy, given love. It's it's never Jesus who sits there and, as you put it, in in, in judgment, going. You know, if you only had like four less things, you'd you'd make it in the kingdom. Right. Jesus isn't there, you know, counting like 
you know, at the TSA of like, all right, you've got, you know, four ounces for your liquid. That's right. It's not that. That's right. It's <laughs> come on in, keep going. Yeah. You know, you're fine. And as we're dragging stuff through the gates in the kingdom, Jesus just sits there and smiles. That's, that's how radical I think this love and mercy is mm -hmm. when we're so concerned with the stuff we want to drag into the kingdom and try to drag into the kingdom and sometimes do drag into the kingdom. Jesus is still there going, come on in. Here you go. This yeah. is your place. Yeah. This is your space. I preached one time, John, years ago on mud pies. <laughs> I did. And and I and I remembered my younger brother one time and by the time he did this, you know, I, I was probably a young teenager and he was uh, seven, eight, something like that. And I remember one day he was out making mud pies, like in the baseball field. Mm -hmm. And like he he like brought them home and was showing like me and my mom these mud pies. And he was like so proud about these mud pies. As the judgmental older brother, I'm like, what a freakish little kid you are. But my mom just kind of looked at them and just kind of smiled at them and said, oh, that's really good, honey. And he was talking about, you know, how he had mud hot dogs and how he had mud hamburgers and this is mud apple pie and, you know, all these great things he had thought that he created. And my mom just looking at them and loving him for all that he's done. He looked at them as the greatest things in the world and my mom just sitting there like, yeah, yeah. And I think I think I think God looks at us that same way sometimes. You know, we're like yeah. saying, "Look, look at all this great stuff I've accomplished," and God's like, "Yeah, looking at you, loving you mm -hmm. while you do it." Yeah. But deep down, it's kind of like, you know, I'm in the business of the kingdom, and you're in the business of mud pies, and I just wish you could see the greatness of this kingdom. You know. I always remember that. So we got mud pies and TSA agents today. It's true. <laughs> we we use what we know. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, empty our hands and open our hearts to serve one another. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. Rain tomorrow. So have a have a beverage today. Yeah. Oh yes. Have a have a good beer. We'll see you tomorrow. Top of the day.